Hey everybody, welcome back. This is iteration 5 for part 5 of module 1. We're going to write a function called multiply. Uh, write a function called multiply. Given two numbers, multiply returns their product, but we're not going to be using the multiplication operator. So, relatively straightforward idea here. Um, if we want to get around multiplication, we usually would want to use division. So we will, I'm sorry, not division, uh, uh, addition. So, first thing is we'll create a result variable. We're going to iterate num2 times, and how we do that is really, you know, it's immaterial, and it's up to us. Uh, and then add num1 to result, and we're doing that num2 times. So if we were to say uh, 7 times 4, instead of 7 times 4, that's the same as 7 plus 7 plus, well, you get the idea, 7 plus 7 plus 7. So it's the same as doing addition of num1 to itself, just adding it up a certain number of times. So once we've done that, the product will be stored in our result variable, so we'll return the result variable. So say variable result is equal to zero. You might think, hey, don't we start products at one? We would, but we're not using any multiplication symbols. Since we're adding, we want to start at zero because that's the added, ad, the additive entity, addition entity, identity, it's something like that. Anyway. For variable i is equal to zero, i is less than num two. Um, this can be one of those just take your word for it, take our word for it kind of deals. Uh, but if you want to work this out with a for loop and a console.log, you can show yourself that if you say variable i is equal to zero, you want to say less than the number of times, then you want to iterate. If you want to say variable i is equal to one, then you want to say less than or equal to. I like doing it for, from zero. I don't have a really significant reason why. Uh, plus plus add num1 to result, so result plus equals, plus equals uh, num1. And then finally, return result. So create a result, do something num2 times. What we're doing num2 times is adding num1 to a result, and then we return the result at the end. Oh no, we are incorrect. Expected zero to deeply equal 48. Oh. It does not do negative numbers, does it? Okay, no worries. So all we need to do in those cases is, ah, oh, this is actually a little bit more complicated. No worries. So first thing we're gonna do is similar to the modulo uh, operator that we just did, we're going to need to organize situations in which the result is negative. So if num1 is greater than zero and num2 is less than zero, or, and we'll wrap a nice parentheses around that, so that's one case where it would be negative. And we'll say, um, what should we say? Variable result is positive is equal to true. We'll assume that it's true to begin with. And then we essentially want this the same way, just opposite. So if num2 is greater than zero and num1 is less than zero, those are the two cases uh, under which our result would be uh, negative. So in this case, we'll say result is positive and we'll reassign that to be false. Otherwise, we're going to leave it as true. Now down here is where we need to kind of organize ourselves around this result is positive. So if result is positive, we are just going to return result. Else, we're going to run to return negative result. So hopefully that should sort out the issue that we're facing. If num1 is greater than zero and num2 is less than zero, then we get a negative because that's a positive number multiplied by a negative. And then this is the um, kind of opposite exchanged, which is num2 is positive, but num1 is negative. In either of those cases, the result's gonna be negative. One thing that we are forgetting though, is that if that's the case, we need to get num1 to, be, uh, to get rid of its negative sign and the same thing with num2. So math.absolute value, doing that backwards. And then same thing for num2. So that should be it. So we found out if the result is positive or not. We reassign the numbers to be whatever, they, whatever their absolute value is. We calculate the uh, multiplication operation, then check if the result is positive and either return result or return negative result. And we're in good shape. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.